This screencast covers uh, Module 3, Lesson 12, where we are once again subtracting mixed numbers. This time, however, we'll need to regroup. There's two techniques that we'll show for each one of these problems. Okay, today we're going to use two techniques. Now, yesterday, or in a previous lesson, 11, there were three techniques. The second technique, as I pointed out, only works in situations where the fraction of the minuend is greater than the fraction of the subterhand. And today, that's not the situation. So we're going to go over uh, the equivalent of method one, which is subtracting from the whole. And then we're going to use the mixed number, uh, where we also do a little subtracting before we actually convert our mixed numbers into improper fractions. Okay, let's go on. Uh, we've started the groundwork for this in lesson six, so let's uh, work it through. We're going to decompose our minuend, and I have three, and I have one-fifth. So I'm going to now take my whole, my three, I'm going to subtract my two, my subtrahend, and I'm going to decompose that into two parts. So I have three minus two minus one-fourth. Let's simplify the first two, uh, the whole number part. Uh, three minus two is one minus one-fourth, and the difference is three-fourths. Now we're going to combine the three-fourths. That's what's left of the whole after we subtracted two and one-fourth. And we're going to now recombine our three-fourths with the one-fifth that we didn't deal with in the first place. So I now have one-fifth plus three-fourths. Find our like units. We have 20. And one-fifth is four-twentieths. And three-fourths is fifteen-twentieths. We'll find the sum, and we get 19 twentieths. So the difference between 3 and 1 fifth and 2 and 1 fourth is 19 twentieths. Well, let's use the other way. Okay, so we're going to rewrite that expression. 3 and 1 fifth minus 2 and 1 fourth. Now, as I mentioned before, we're going to subtract the whole first. So 3 minus 2 is 1. So I have 1 and 1 fifth minus 1 fourth. Now we have a nice small number to work with. So I can convert my 1 and 1 fifth to 6 fifths minus 1 fourth. Find our like units, which again are 20 ths. And 6 fifth is 24 20 ths. And 1 fourth is 5 20 ths. We'll subtract 24 minus 5, we get 19 twentieths. Uh, two approaches, both work well. Let's now go on and do another example. Okay, we have 7 and 2 fifths minus 5 and 2 thirds. We'll work with the subtracting from the whole first. Decompose our minuend. Take the whole 7. Now we're going to subtract the subtrahend, decomposing it. So that becomes 7 minus 5 minus 2 thirds. 7 minus 5 is 2 minus 2 thirds. That equals 1 and 1 third. Now we'll take my 1 and 1 third, decompose it to 1 plus 1 third. And we'll add back our 2 fifths plus 2 fifths. We're going to work with our fractions first. So I have 1 plus, what's our common unit? It's 15. And 1 third is 5 fifteenths, and 2 fifths is 6 fifteenths. We'll find the sum. We have 1 plus 11 fifteenths equals 1 and 11 fifteenths. Let's uh, do the other, do it the other way. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite my expression. 7 and 2 fifths minus 5 and 2 thirds. Well, uh, again, we're going to subtract the whole first. So 7 minus 5 is 2 
we have 2 and 2 fifths minus 2 thirds. Now we're going to change the minuend into an improper fraction. We don't have to do anything with the subtrahend because it's already a regular fraction. So I get 12 fifths minus 2 thirds. The common unit is 15 and we have 36 15 in place of 12 fifths and we have 10 15 in place of 2 thirds. We find the difference and we get 26 15 We can decompose that into 15 15 plus 11 15 giving us 1 and 11 15 We'll run through one more quick example for you, and then we'll do a word problem. Okay, method one, decompose. So we're going to take my whole and separate it from the fraction. So we now have 9, we're going to subtract that subtrahend, decomposing it, so 9 minus 2 minus 6 sevenths. 9 minus 2 is 7 minus 6 sevenths equals 6 and 1 seventh. We'll take that and now combine it with a fraction, the fraction part of our minuend. I'll take 6 and 1 seventh and decompose it and add back that fractional part of my minuend. We'll work with the fractions first. Our common unit is 21 and 1 7th becomes 3 21sts and 2 thirds is 14 21sts. I now find the sum of the fractions and I get 17 21sts and my difference between 9 and 2 thirds and 2 and 6 sevenths is 6 and 17 thirteenths, or 21st rather, excuse me. Okay, the other method now. We're going to see the advantage of method 1 in this because uh, we're going to be working with a little bit bigger numbers. I tend to like method 1. Uh, method 2 is not bad though. Uh, it just gets a little tougher if we have larger numbers. So, let Okay, let's uh, do that method uh, through method 2. Rewriting our expression, we have 9 and 2 thirds minus 2 and 6 sevenths. We'll subtract the whole. 9 minus 2 is 7. So we have 7 and 2 thirds minus 6 sevenths. We'll now convert 7 and 2 thirds to an improper fraction, and we get 23 thirds minus 6 sevenths. Now we need to convert this to our common unit which is 20 firsts. And I'm going to have to multiply uh, 23 times 7. Now this is where we're going to have to just go aside here and start doing some calculations outside of uh, our fr fraction work here. So we find this product and we get 161. So 161 21st. We have to multiply 6 sevenths times 3 and we get 18. Okay, once again, uh, we're working with larger numbers, so we're going to have to work on the side here. Don't try to do these in your head. This is where mistakes start to occur. So we have 161 minus 18. We do our regroup. 11 minus 8 is 3. 5 minus 1 is 4, and we have 143 21sts. Okay, now we need to convert that to a mixed number, and fractions are also division problems. The numerator is my dividend, my denominator is my divisor. Uh, if 
If I do it times 7, I'm going to get 147. That's too big, so we'll have to go with 6. And we get 126. We subtract. And we get 17. So our answer is 6. And the remainder becomes our numerator. Our divisor is our denominator. And we get 6 and 1 seventh once again. Uh, as you can see, this one led to a little bit more complicated uh, work in terms of computation. Uh, however, it is very straightforward. This one, the technique one, seems to be a little bit simpler in terms of the numbers that we're dealing with. That's the advantage of that. All right, this is a word problem, number four from your problem set. And it's very similar to number four in your homework. Uh, both of these are two-step problems. They should look somewhat familiar in terms of the structure. We'll read it. We'll set up a tape diagram. And then we'll set up two alternatives for solving it. I'm not going to actually go through the math uh, because I want to keep this video down in size. But let's read and get you started. Okay, Jasmine decided to spend six and a half hours studying over the weekend. Okay, that's the whole. She spent one and one-fourth hours studying on Friday evening and two and two-third hours on Saturday. Those are two of the parts. How much longer does she need to spend stud studying on Sunday in order to reach her goal? Okay, the tape diagram. As I said, we knew we know the whole. And that is six and one half. That's her goal. We know that on Friday she studied one and one fourth hours. On Saturday she studied two and two thirds hours. And the question is how much time did she spend on Sunday? We don't know that. This tape diagram gives us a couple alternatives. We've seen this one before. One way to solve this is to find the sum of Friday and Saturday, or one and one fourth, plus two and two thirds, and subtract that from six and a half. So the expression would look like this, and I'm, I'm trying to get you guys to write the whole expression out, because very frequently we forget to complete the problem. So I have six and one half minus the sum of one and one fourth and two and two thirds. So when we do that, we're going to first solve the expression, the addition expression in the parentheses, and whatever the sum is, we're going to subtract it from six and a half. The alternative is to set up repeated subtraction. So we'll start six and a half as our whole, and we can now subtract the time on Friday, that's one and one fourth. And then we'll subtract the time on Saturday, that's two and two thirds. And we'll work from left to right. So first we would find the difference uh, between six and a half, then one and one fourth. And whatever that difference is, we'll take that and subtract two and two thirds from that. Either approach will work, whichever you find easiest. Uh, it may be easier for you to add uh, once, then subtract, or it might be easier for you to subtract twice. It's up to you. Both are sound procedures.